All right, we're live. It is just one minute before 11 o'clock on um, Monday, August 30th. And that's mountain time. 11 o'clock mountain time is when I do, this is Emily Taylor live in my studio. Um, I see we have a few people joining us already. Um, I am super excited today to have a good friend of mine join me. Um, she is a designer that I've worked with that I first met at Riley Blake Designs. Remember, I used to design fabric for Riley Blake Designs, and this is Karina Gardner. Karina, welcome to the to my studio. Actually, you're in your studio, and I'm in my studio, and um, I'm super excited to have you here because Karina is a very, very talented designer, and she's got her finger on the pulse of design in the quilt world, but she's also branched out into different arenas in the in the design world. So she, and she has a PhD in design. <laughs> so she's very well educated and she's very experienced. And so I thought this would be a really fun um, interview for all of you to kind of get to know Karina and, um, so we have some people hopping on. It's great to see you guys. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, we are, so the format today is, I have a couple questions for Karina. And as you have questions, if you just wanna type them in the chat, we will get to the questions probably kind of towards the end. Um, but we want to know what your questions are. And Karina is gonna spark some questions as well. So. Um, let's just dig right in, Karina. And the first thing that I want to have you share with the audience is a little bit about your design journey. I think that's always interesting. Um, designers kind of do tend to, well, we're hardworking and the design world is competitive and difficult and kind of cutthroat. And um, so I want to know a little bit about your design journey and how you have arrived at where you are right now. Does that sound okay? That sounds awesome. Thanks, Emily. Thanks for the introduction. You're so nice. Guys, thanks for saying hello in the chat. I love seeing where you guys are from. I'm like seeing Henderson and um, South Carolina, and I saw someone from South Africa. Seriously, so fun, you guys. So fun that you guys are here. Um, so as Emily was saying, I'm Karina Gardner. I have a PhD in design, but the PhD in design doesn't really define me. I had always intended to teach, and I did teach. I taught at the University of Minnesota, and um, I think at some point I will probably teach at a university again. I, I think I will. I, I love teaching. Um, and I finished and I had very little children. It seemed like every time I had a degree, I'd have a baby like 10 days later. That was kind of like the way I did things. And so um, I had these little ones at home and I thought, you know what? I don't want to be doing research right now. I, I love teaching, but it takes up a lot of time and I want to be home with my kids. So at the time... I can I interrupt you real quick? How yeah. many kids do you have? I have three. Okay. So I have, I have three, three kids. Also. Yeah. <laughs> so three kids and um, it's been, oh, I can't believe those days. Like I finished my PhD and I had a baby 10 days later. So oh she God. walked with me across the stage and it was so wonderful. It was so fun. So um, I were, Oh, so I, at the time, scrapbooking was really big. So I actually didn't start in fabric. I didn't know anything about fabric and I didn't know anything about quilting. Um, so I started in digital scrapbooking, got a scrapbooking deal and then got a fabric deal. And I actually did not start with Riley Blake. I started with Northcott. Oh, so okay. I did five lines for them before I switched over to Riley Blake. And mm -hmm. then like just went from there. I expanded into a lot of different fields. I did... Um, in Utah, there's something called Desert Book. They have about 30 stores. I did huge lines for them under my brand. We did dishware and bracelets and oh. towels. We did all sorts of things. So I've kind of dabbled with a lot of things. I became the creative director of a scrapbooking company for a few years, um, but all the meantime doing fabric and keeping like just this residual income stream from digital products and um, and teaching a little bit as well. But it has been like this crazy, wonderful, creative journey. And I learned a lot along the way, which led me to um, which we can talk a little more back 
at the end, but I do have a program now that I only started in April called Design Suite Program. And it's to help creatives, people who are creative, become designers to build residual income. So it's really different than being like just, um, you know, doing the thing, the craft. It's for people who want to make that leap into actually designing. So I have a question for you then. So your design journey, what, when did it begin? When did you get your PhD? I was 27. <laughs> you were 27. So what year was that? Um, 2007. Okay. So back in 2007 and you got your degree and you were a young mom and you taught at the university level for a little bit, but then you realized, oh, this is, I, I don't want to do research right now. This is tough being a mom at the same time. And you were going to dive in and be and do the design work, right? And so you have been a fabric designer for Northcott. You are currently a designer for Riley Blake Designs. You had a scrapbook company. Um, but one thing that's really interesting is that you, um, you have a residual income from digital products, right? Mm -hmm. um, so real quick, I have a question for you about Mini Lou. Like, is Mini oh, yeah. Lou going and actually so i it's we just closed the the brand name actually in december so we so i own this company called mini lou for six years and we actually dba'd it under karina gardner inc and the reason we did that was because we found that physical products did pretty good we we, we were making it we continued to make a profit off of it but not as much as our digital products for it. Okay. And it was like not even a tie. And without bringing on a lot more staff onto my team to run it, I was like, we got to cut something here. Like I can't do all of the things. So Mini Lou does exist, but it exists as a, a design entity now. Okay. So the uh, so you've dabbled in, well, not dabbled. You've, di you've gone in a deep dive in the quilt world now. And, um, so, but you've also designed in the scrapbook world and the surface pattern design world um, through Deseret Book. So you've you've really touched on a lot of different places in the design industry at large, right? Um, so my question for you, and I want to get, I want this to lead into your design suite program, but I want to know what are some of the maybe the one or two biggest things that you've learned through your journey as a designer, what are the, what are the big things that you would be able to share? And, and then we'll talk about your design suite program. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is that people think if you are a successful designer, that everybody must be saying yes to you. And <laughs> I so think, I take rejection like it's nobody's business. Yeah. Like the number of no's I even get now, which is so crazy to me because yeah. I actually have a pretty big brand name at this point and I've done all these things and kind of well known in a lot of industry. I'm a designer's designer. Like I've taught designers, I promise you guys know, have taken my courses or have done workshops with me to get better. And so like I'm a designer's designer. And so it is crazy to me. Like I, like I continually get rejections, but I'm not afraid to put myself out there. Yeah. And rejection is just like one more step to a yes somewhere else. Yep. You know what? That is so, so important to understand. And, and I've talked a lot about this with my audience recently that failure is part of the process to improve. If I'm not making mistakes, I'm not trying hard enough. So, I mean, that's kind of in the same the same vein. We have to be willing to make mistakes or be told that no, no thank you, <laughs> right? We have to we have to experience that in order to progress and grow. So, that's really great that you are good with rejection and same thing. I mean, that's one thing I've been like, I have the thickest skin. We as designers have really thick skin right? It's you just, have, you have to, because just because someone likes your work doesn't mean somebody else isn't going to, right. like, it's right. like, you just, you can't and like, and, and I understand that because I was a creative director for two companies and we would say no to people. It wasn't because their stuff wasn't great. It just wasn't right for the season or the time or it wasn't right for whatever we were doing. Right. Okay. So that's awesome. Let's, or do you have any other really big takeaways that you've learned through your through your journey? 
I don't know. That one's the biggest one. That, that feels like, you know, just, just keep trying. Oh, oh, I will tell you this. Okay. As designers, I think most of us tend to be actually introverts. I actually think we like to actually, just, I'm not. You're, not, <laughs> like, you're not, I am, I'm a total, like, yeah. I just want to be designing. Let me just sit at my computer or my art table or whatever. I just want to be designing. Okay. And lots of people in my design suite program, they're like, they're like, we're introverts. And I was like, I understand that. But one of the best things I did when I, when I kind of like decided, okay, it's time to build the team. It's time to do these other things. I was like, I have to start putting my face in front of camera. That was hard. That that's hard. hard. That's hard for people. And to not judge yourself, to be yeah. really graceful with yourself and be like, it's just okay. And also to let people know who I was. The first couple of courses I taught online, I was very serious. I was teaching my illustrator classes. I was teaching them very seriously. And then I went to a workshop and, you know, I'm talking to people and they were like, oh, I thought you were this really serious person because in all your classes, you're very, you know, and they're like, you're like super mellow in real life. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty regular. I'm a regular human being. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not like, and they were like, we didn't know that. And so like, kind of like being okay with your authentic self you on know, camera. That's what I was going to say, it, it, it's a very vulnerable, you feel very vulnerable being authentic in front of an audience. That is hard. Because as when we're in front of people, we want to put on our best, we want to put our best foot forward and be, you know, so it's hard to open up and let people see the real you sometimes. Yeah, I, I do think it's a difficulty. And it's something that you get better and better and better with because at some point, and I don't know if it's age that does it as well. But as I get older, I'm kind of like, I only want the people who really like me following me anyway. Like, it's okay. It's okay. If I'm not for everybody. Well, and you know what else too? I mean, I'm sure that you have found this, but I found I have found that the people that w that are watching right now are that's these are my people and they are so kind. Oh my goodness, I love them and they support me and boost me up and they're and 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 I have loved that. And I wouldn't feel like I have that connection with people if I didn't allow myself to become authentic and vulnerable in front of them, but they know that I, that I am. And so consequently, I feel like we've had a real, a real genuine interaction over Facebook and over social media and surprising. Like, I love that. I love these people. They are awesome. So Which I'm is sure the point, that right? Yeah. That's the point of social media. Like somewhere along the way, I think it started that way with social media where we were authentic and then, mm -hmm there was like this weird period where everyone's like, we have to only post the most beautiful pictures and we only have to post the most beautiful, whatever. And I've actually really enjoyed the video portion of like Instagram and stuff because it's felt a little more real. I feel like you get to really see me. It's not this beautiful pose with me and my quilts all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So kind of at, to, to kind of crystallize then the two things that you feel like you've learned are um, number one, don't be afraid of rejection. Number two, kind of trying to tap into, even though you might be an introvert and a lot of designers are introverts. And, and even though I'm not an introvert, I am an extrovert. I know that it is hard to put your authentic self out there. And so you, your, what are your strategies for kind of staying authentic in your, in your work in front of people? You, this is going to be really funny. Do you guys know what the app is called Marco Polo? Has anybody yeah. used that app? Yeah. To me, so I spend most of my time with my sisters and my friends on Marco Polo because I don't have time to actually go out because I work a lot yeah. and I'm with my team and stuff. And what I actually found was Marco Polo was helpful because when I look at myself and I'm just talking to my friends, I talk a certain way. And uh -huh. once I started figuring that out, I was just like, stop worrying about me being scripted. Stop mm -hmm. worrying about making it look perfect. Just talk to people like you would your girlfriends or your sisters. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So all of this now is going to lead into tell me what you are doing now. You mentioned <laughs> you gave us a little nugget about this design suite program. So tell us what this is 
And is this kind of your main gig now? I mean, I know you're still there's no, Yeah, there's no main gig. It's like okay. all the things contribute to each other. Um, I do have a team, so we're trying to do all the things right now. I have somewhere between 9,000 and 12,000 products on the internet, like just everywhere. It's kind of, it is kind of crazy. crazy. So, so we're taking some of the strategies that I teach my students and we're exploding it so that the design part of my business explodes at the same time as the education piece. So this is something I've been wanting to do forever, but it just never, I could never find the right platform and the right way to do it. So basically what Design Suite is, is it's a basically college. <laughs> You're like with me, it's like a suite of programs, Fabric Design Academy, Silhouette Designer Masterclass, um, Illustrator Academy. We have two more courses coming out, um, Photoshop Academy and Creative Fabrica, Business for Designers. Anyway, so we have, it's a lot of stuff, okay? Very cool. And, and so we had all this coursework, but then I found that one of the problems was if you went to a college course with me, like if you came to the University of Minnesota with me, I would see you once or twice a week in class and critique your stuff, right? And I think that was like the, the missing piece. So we included in it, there's like a critique and coaching meeting every single week with my students. So it's basically like going to college with me, but online. And the cool thing is that because of the way I set up the program, all the coursework, the coaching piece becomes a membership eventually, but yeah. the, the coursework you just get for the lifetime of the site, KarinaGardnerCourses.com. I just want you to have access to it because- so, Let me make sure I've got that written down. Karina, what's the, how do we access that? KarinaGardnerCourses.com. But before you guys do that, let me just tell you, okay. most people, before they come and do Design Suite with me, they do something called a design boot camp with me. It's only $17. It's a week long. We do live video and all of my design suite members will come back into it because it like motivates them. It reminds them we do strategy sessions. So we are talking about how you're able to build residual income. Like, cause if you're a fabric designer, you create a fabric collection and you make money, right? Mm -hmm. There is like the only time in history I've ever seen because of the internet that if you have, thousands of products like me, you can put them online and I could stop today. I could totally hundred percent stop designing today and still make thousands of dollars every month because those websites are working for me. Right. right. And so, yeah. Yeah. And so all those digital products are making money. It's way better than the influencer model. People have no idea that this is like, you start making money right away. And so in design bootcamp, which is like a week long, we just go through the entire framework of what you have to do to make it. And then lots of people at that point, usually by the first or second day, people know they're like, I am so in, I want to become a designer because it really is this amazing creative career. So I have a question for you about your about this. Um, so you're teaching the hands-on skills about how to become a designer. Are you also teaching kind of the business side of it? Yeah, we have a, we have a business piece to it. Okay. So we're building like a framework that you work from. And mm -hmm. then we also do any like there's like technical stuff, right? Like how to build a newsletter list, right? So there are things like that we do in the coaching piece of it in our weekly meetings. If someone comes in and says, I cannot figure out MailChimp. I'm like, okay, guys, let's open up MailChimp. I'm going to show you how to set this up, you know? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's really hands-on to whatever the membership needs. We not only meet once a week, but we do quarterly virtual conferences. It's like a full day conference uh -huh. and members will come in and talk. We have a community and everyone will ask questions. We have a database we're building of all the shops that all of us are in. And so oh, people can cool. ask questions like, oh, you're in that shop. Does that shop do pretty good? Like, are you making money from that shop? How many products do you have? Like anything is open to that community, which is amazing because you're not going to get that in a general design uh -huh. space. People aren't sharing that information. Yeah, this is this is awesome, Karina. I'm so excited to have you explain this to me because when we first mentioned it, you know, a little bit ago when I was doing when I did your podcast, 
um, I, I wasn't quite clear on it. So this is really helpful to help me understand. And I think that that's why I had you on here, because I think there are people in my community that might be interested in learning how to become a designer. So this is fantastic. Great resources. Thanks. So Sorry, I'm noticing someone asked, is all the coursework videos? The answer is yes. Like you have like a, a grouping of coursework that's videos, but then you also have weekly meetings that are live. Okay, so let me ask you, um, so we find this, do you wanna give us the website one more time to yeah. find it? You can go to karinagardner.com because it'll okay. take you to courses, but karinagardnercourses.com. And if you want to go into the boot camp, we have actually the next boot camp is in two weeks. So okay. it's September 13th. And we do them once a month. So we recommend you come live. Like the people who come live get because we're like you're asking questions, we're telling you all the things. Right. Um, and uh, that's $17. That's just karinagardnercourses.com slash design bootcamp. Okay, so we can get to any of your resources by karinagardner.com. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's take a look at some of the questions. It looks like we've got, oh, let's see, my, we must be getting a lot of questions because my, my, my chat box just kind of locked up. So let me see if I can um, refresh that. Okay, here we go. So let me just kind of scroll down. I like to just say hello to some of my friends that are regulars, um, my friends from Texas. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Barbara, for putting that up there. I appreciate that. Um, San Diego, Maryland. We've got Krista from South Africa. Welcome. Um, again, lots of friends from Texas. Um, Barbara, you're always so sweet to hop on. It's great to see you. Uh, let's see, Gat, let's see. So Barbara, I, I'm answering your question. How do you get into this field? I think Karina has kind of answered that. She's That's why she's putting this out there. Um, we've got Indiana, Georgia, from Old Orchard Beach, Maine. Hi, Doris. Doris is a friend I recognize. And we've got a friend from Macedonia. I think this, this person is a new a new person. So welcome. We're so glad to have you. Heike from Germany again. Hello. Uh, let's see. From Spain. We've got Anna from Spain. Anna has popped in here pretty regularly. Juanita just said age is your best friend. It lets you realize what's important and how you use your time. Do what you love. So Juanita, you know what is so interesting? One of the things that I was going to say as I have learned through my creative journey, and I've shared this with you before, one of the most important things for me, and Karina, I'm sure you'll agree, is doing what I love is really, really critical. My best work is gonna come when I'm when I'm happily doing what I love. If I'm forcing myself, I'm not having fun, and it is not working out. <laughs> so anyway, Juanita, great comment. Um, oh, Shari's on here, did you see that? Hi, Shari. Shari, great to have you. Shari, maybe we'd like to have you come on here next so that we can check in with you and see how motherhood is treating you. So true. Um, yeah, Shari is a designer uh, from Riley Blake as well. That we all That's our common connection. Um, okay, let's see. Juanita just asked, after boot camp, how long before you start Design Suite? So Karina, that's a question you for you. You can decide. So we have all levels coming in. We have brand new people who have never used the software. They usually, they immediately come in. So they have access to all the courses. So they're starting to take coursework, but they don't do the um, coaching portion for a couple of months. So okay. they can do some, co co like they can do the coursework okay. first. We have, we have seasoned designers come in, which seems so crazy. Cause I'm kind of like, you don't need this. Like you're fine. And they're like, no, I need this. Why? Cause they want all the resources. They want access to me. They want their stuff critiqued they want help getting into a lot of residual income areas and so and what i call it residual income i think the world right now the word is passive income it's very close to being the same thing the reason i like residual is because you still have to do a little bit of work there's not a lot of work but you just have to sort of like keep an eye on things and make sure that they're yeah. they're still going i think passive is a little bit like i don't know you're like you do really, yeah you're not <laughs> doing anything at all okay so, so your yeah. courses then are on demand. So after the boot camp, 
the courses are on demand. You can get started with the courses anytime. And then the live interactive things follow that, right? Yeah. And you can sign up. We usually, that's a six month piece of the program. And so okay. you can choose any time in the first year when you want the coaching and critiquing part. Okay, very cool. All right. Well, this sounds super exciting, everyone. I am so grateful that we have had Karina here. If you have any final questions, just go ahead and type them in now. Of course, as a lot of people will watch this video, um, the replay, and as you get questions, just know that you can always, you can probably find Karina at Karina, KarinaGardner.com. You can always ask me questions also, Emily um, at collagequilter.com. And you can find, you know, where to find me on YouTube and in the Collage Quilter Facebook group, Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. So um, let's see. I don't see. Really anything. quick. I want to plug you guys, Emily's episodes on my podcast. Emily gives so much value, which it's really clear she's doing this for you guys here. She gives so much value. I was totally blown away by the episodes that we did. My podcast is Make and Design with Karina Gardner, and it's like everywhere. And we do three episodes a week. Emily did two episodes with me, and they are, I've already referenced them a couple of times because they're that good. She oh, gives thanks. so much good information. Thanks, Karina. That's sweet. Yeah, thanks. I totally forgot about that. Thank you for putting that plug in there. So say one more time the name of your podcast. The podcast is Make and Design with Karina Gardner. Okay, everybody got that? Make and Design um, with Karina Gardner. And we can find it at, on any platform where you get your podcasts. iTunes, Spotify, Google. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Well, Karina, it's been... My pleasure. Let's see. There's one final question from Deborah. Let's see if we can pull that up here. I Okay. She says, Deborah, hi from Michigan. To be part of the design course, do you already need to have an idea of what you want to design? No, that's like the best part about it. I actually think the people who come in kind of open actually end up doing the best. Why? Because we talk very often about what's trending right now, what's making the most money. And so generally, if you don't have an idea and you're kind of like, oh, that sounds kind of fun, they'll just hop right into whatever's trending and we'll start making money off of that first. Okay, cool. That is awesome. And sometimes it's really the other thing too that I know as a designer working in this daily, it is really hard to always be pulling out inspiration. So I'll bet that your course and the group that you've got, I mean, I'll bet the inspiration is just going crazy in there. And for that reason alone, it would probably be really, really helpful for anybody that's established or just doesn't, that's kind of exploring what they want to do. I'm sure this is, I'm sure the inspiration is a huge part of it too. So, um, Okay, that sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Karina. This was this was a really fun little visit. I appreciate it. And um, thank you to everybody for being here. And um, we're we're going to wrap things up now. So again, uh, let us know if you have any questions, KarinaGardner.com or Emily Taylor or Emily at CollageQuilter.com. So Take care, everyone. Good to see you, Karina. Fantastic to see you. And best of luck. We'll be in touch again soon.